What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a quick unboxing and first look at the freshly shipped Amazon Kindle Fire HD 8.9 inch. So this is the big brother to the 7 inch model we got way back in September, and this kind of directly competes with the iPad, which is still a little bit bigger at 9.7 inches. Now the design and features are mostly carried over from the 7 inch, but we do get a larger display and a bumped up processor. So we go from a 1.2 to a 1.5 gigahertz dual core old map processor. Now this is available in two sizes, 16 and 32 gig for $299 or $369 but that's with special offers. You'll need to pay an extra $15 to avoid ads on your lock screen. You can also grab a 4G LTE version in 32 or 64 gig capacities, which start you off at $499 or $599. So fully loaded, you can pick one of these up for a hefty $614. Now, if you're debating capacity, just remember this does not have a SD card reader, so the capacity inside is all you get. Now, like all Amazon Kindles, they ship in frustration-free packaging, so it's a simple matter of just pulling the tab and you're in. Now, on the top of the lid, you'll find a small piece of literature explaining the basics, but the Kindle does come loaded with a full manual for much more info. Now, under the plastic wrapped Kindle Fire is the only accessory, a micro USB charging cable. So it doesn't come with a USB wall adapter, but you could use your Mac or PC to charge your Fire, and you can purchase one for $10 from Amazon. So with the plastic removed, we can take a close look around. On the back, we'll find a soft touch plastic material, which is nice for grippability, but it does show fingerprints and kind of holds on to them, so they're kind of hard to get off once they get on there. Also on the back is a distinctive plastic strip, which kind of frames the hallmark feature of the Kindle Fire, which are these sets of stereo speakers on either side, which makes the Kindle Fire sound pretty good relative to most tablets, which usually sport only a mono speaker. Now on the right hand side, we'll find a headphone jack and the only buttons on the entire tablet, the volume controls and the power sleep button. Like the seven inch model, these are very flush fitting and kind of difficult to feel for. Now on the bottom, we'll find two very similar looking ports, one a micro USB port and the other a micro HDMI port for outputting video to an HDTV. Between them is the only microphone. Now on the front, you'll find the only camera on the tablet, a front facing camera, which is capable of recording video at 720p. So this is good for things like uh, Skype or other teleconferencing apps. Now Amazon makes setting up the Kindle very easy. So if you order this on amazon.com, it will already be registered to your Amazon account. So all you have to do is log into your wireless network, pick your time zone, and connect to your Twitter or Facebook accounts if you want. All that information will actually be transferred from your existing uh, Amazon Kindles if you've already set that up. If there are any software updates, those will also be pushed and installed uh, right before you get to your Amazon Kindles home screen. Now, once you're finished, you're good to go. So this means that all of my Amazon purchases and settings are automatically transferred to the new Kindle. Now the display is the big news here. So we have a 1920 by 1200 LCD IPS display with a PPI of 254, which can play back full 1080p video. Now this is right up there with the iPad's 265 PPI. The display does a very good job. It's very sharp and vivid with deep contrast. It looks good off axis and they've done a good job minimizing glare. The display is also flush to the glass, which further enhances the quality so there's less refraction and distortion. Now it's not as bright as the iPad's retina display and it tends to favor a warmer color temperature, but this display does feel and look pretty nice. The high res display also means text looks very smooth and sharp with no eye fatiguing distortion or jagged pixelation. So if you're a heavy reader, this is definitely an important consideration when buying an LCD tablet. Now the seven inch model is effectively a scaled down version of this tablet with less capacity options and no available LTE. The display is smaller but sports a similar PPI and can play back movies at 720p instead of 1080p. The designs are identical, complete with the stereo speakers on the back panel. The only difference here is the positioning of the microphone on the 8.9 inch model which places it between the ports instead of near the camera like we get on the 7 inch model. Now the iPad at 9.7 inches is larger and proportionally different from the classic 4x3 aspect ratio versus the narrower 16x10 display of the Kindle Fire 8.9. Now the 7.9 inch iPad mini is about as wide as the 8.9 inch uh, Fire, but not as long. Now I've already covered the software in exhausting detail on my Kindle Fire HD 7 inch video, which I'll post in the description and in an annotation at the end of this video. But in short, Amazon is utilizing Android 4.0 under its own skin. We have a home screen with a carousel view of recently opened apps, books, magazines, web pages, and etc. 
At the top of the display is a list of content categories, such as games, apps, books, music, videos, newsstand, audiobooks, web, photos, and docs. Now, if you click on any one of those, you can explore the content stored locally or on Amazon. So Amazon kind of stores it for you, so you don't have to carry everything with you. You can also jump to the Amazon store to purchase more content. And if you're an Amazon Prime member, you have access to a lot of free content through Amazon, including books, movies, and TV shows. Now, in the lower corner, you also have a favorites menu, which lets you pin items to it so you can quickly access some of your favorite apps from the home screen. We also have a full web browser with tab browsing and uh, bookmarking. That works pretty good. Swiping down from the top of the screen gives you quick access to settings such as screen rotation lock, volume controls, brightness, and more. And all of this works in portrait or landscape view. Now, I will say that the 8.9 inch Fire does seem to perform quicker and smoother than the 7 inch tablet, probably thanks to the bumped up processor. But I still see some performance issues within some apps, such as when I'm scrolling through a magazine. We still exhibit some of that lagging. Overall, the 8.9 inch version of this tablet has some nice hardware, thanks to that high quality display and the superb speakers. But it's still a tablet best suited for consumption of Amazon content. The app selection is limited, and the Fire doesn't have features like Siri or Google Now or voice dictation, among many other things now available in Android and iOS. So that's going to do for me in this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.